Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Bree Sports Center. I'm your host Bradford Ambrose. Alongside me, as always, Wayne Epps Jr. and Haley Thompson, sports editors at the Breeze. And uh, this time we're going to start off with football. Football uh, won by the skin of their teeth uh, Saturday night, 24-20 against St. Francis. That puts them 2-1 uh, and one, uh, overall this season. Wayne, talk about their night. Right, it was a rough night. Uh, they didn't score their, their first touchdown until late in the third quarter, almost the fourth quarter. Um, Versong really struggled passing the ball. He was only 10 for 23 uh, for 145 yards, three interceptions, had, only had one touchdown passing. Uh, the rushing game really carried him to the win in the second half. Uh, Dequan Scott rushed for 137 yards and two touchdowns in the second half, uh, 190 overall. So, um, you know, again, not, not like what we expected the passing game to be carrying them this year. It's been the rushing game that's been it come, come to the to the, the save uh, in these first three games, and especially especially this this past weekend. So um, it was an interesting win. Um, you expected them to always blow out St. Francis. They had a 55 to 7 win last year to start the season. So uh, it was really surprising to see them down as long as they were. They were down by as much as 11. Uh, so, uh, really surprising win. Matthews was, was certainly disappointed in the post game press conference. Uh, he mentioned about uh, he told Michael not to throw the ball anymore, and that's what they did. They, did, they only threw the ball three times in the second half, yeah. and, and again, the rushing game uh, carried them to the win. So, very uh, bizarre win for the Dukes. Yeah, and uh, I, something he mentioned in the post game press conference, he said, uh, if you go in, go in our locker room, locker room right now, we're acting like you know, we didn't win because um, they were you know, very disappointed about their. Uh, about how they played, but he said, "Well, wake up, woke up, you know, Sunday morning, it'll feel like a win." Right. Um, so. He said, "Well, they played well and we didn't. What exactly. else y'all yeah, want to know?" Exactly. That's why he said. All right. So that, yeah, that, that about summed, summed it up. So. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, shift gears and talk about women's soccer. Women's soccer five and three. Haley. Yeah, they won against Charlotte and Davidson this weekend. Um, their season's looking up. They've been doing well lately. So excited to see where they go next. Okay, all right, and uh, Wayne. Now we're going to talk about women's or uh, men's soccer. They are three and two. Right. They uh they had a pretty, played a pretty good game against number seventeen ranked Georgetown on Sunday. They um they just lost to them by one goal in overtime. Um, so again, the, the men's soccer just like last year, they've shown that they can play against some of the top teams in the country. And if you remember last season, they they knocked off number one UNC at home, mm -hmm. uh, and they almost beat ranked Georgetown last uh, last year at home as well. So. Um, they play. They can. They can play with some of the top teams. Uh, they just gotta play well in conference play, and uh, give themselves a chance to make it to an NCAA tournament. Because I feel like if they do, they they can. They can. Uh, they've shown that they can. They can compete. So, uh, very very nice uh, litmus test for them this, this weekend. All right, and now let's uh, talk about women's tennis. Right. They they started their fall season um, this weekend. They had uh, three flight ch uh, titles um, in the Liberty Classic, uh, two two uh, singles and one doubles. So, um, good start to the fall season. Um, It'll run obviously the whole semester, and then they have the spring season you know, coming up in the spring semester. So, um, good way to, to, to get the season started off. All right, um, and <clears throat> Jamie recently installed the the new convocation floor, um, and there was we, we talked about it in the program a few weeks ago about how it was uh, got mixed reviews, uh, kind of uh, going out there on the limb with the design, um, and they uh, recently installed it and kind of looks better than we uh, than it, it planned out to be, Haley. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, including us, you know, we thought it was very ostentatious, and it just, when you see the um, the graphic, like, design part of it on the computer, it just looks very, everything's just very opaque, very, like, just in your face the entire time. Um, and that's kind of what a lot of people said they didn't like about it. It was just way too out there. But once it got on the floor, and now that it's all sealed and done and everything, you know, it doesn't look, it's a lot more muted. It doesn't look as in your face as everybody expected and I don't know personally I think the Duke dogs actually look pretty awesome um, they actually did away for anybody who hasn't seen they did away with the gold bars um, on the ends which personally I think helped a lot um, it's just JMU purple all the way around all the corners which looks a lot nicer um, so yeah I think it I think once the students see it they're gonna like it a lot better than they did originally yeah right yeah I went, went had a chance to go and look at it on Friday when it was uh, just finished and uh, like I said it has that wow factor like yeah, you couldn't really tell in the graphic design that they put out, but seeing the person, seeing those Duke dogs out in the court, it really pops once you walk out into, into the into the, uh, the, con the convocation center. So uh, I think I think it'll, it'll uh, draw some ten attention, which we want after the insta away run last year, and uh, I think it'll be nice for us. So the court can't get you wins, but it, it'll draw some attention. <laughs> yeah, it definitely got some attention on uh, numerous uh, news outlets and 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 blogs and and stuff online. I you know I'd see, yeah. You know, 
various opinions about it. So. Uh, Looks, looks rather good. Um, and let's uh, end our program today by talking, uh, let's giving a preview of uh, Charlotte on Saturday football. Um, the recent win against St. Francis kind of uh, has some things to work on against Charlotte. Right, obviously they want to get the passing game uh, situated, um, but Charlotte is an interesting team. This is their first year of football. Uh, they started a football program, um, and this game was at a late addition to the schedule as well, so that adds to the interest. Um, this, this, Saturday it's supposed to be an open date, one of two open dates for the team this year. Um, but they added the team this game in the back in August after ODU uh, dropped the game. Uh, so uh, it's an interesting game. Charlotte's two and one, so a pretty good start for the first year, definitely. Um, they're good. They're independent this year. They'll be Conference USA next year. Um, so you know, I think I think uh, the Dukes will give them a, uh, or Charlotte will give them a, a good test again, and uh, we'll see if uh, they can get the pass the game back on track. So not have to rely so much on Daquan Scott and all the others. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us on this edition of the Bree Sports Center. I'm Bradford Ambrose.